Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a list today on 20 amazing colorless commander cards. Super excited about this list. The channel really took off when I started covering EDH topics. And when I go back and look at some of those early videos, I've noticed that so much has changed. So many new cards have come out. I'm looking at expanding my top 10 list to include a lot more cards and a lot more diversity. Part of the thing that also motivated me for this particular series is I've been blogging on EDH specific topics over at Mox Boarding House's blog. I'm really enjoying it. This particular list also has a article that accompanies it with a little bit of explanation on each of the cards over at Mox Boarding House. We're also running a poll over there on what is the best commander of all time. So please head over there, uh, submit the poll or add a comment if we've left off your favorite commander. Now when I say lists, I'm actually doing two lists here. One thing that's very important for me is that there are budget cards for EDH. EDH is not about spending large amounts of money, it's about having fun and finding interesting cards that other people aren't playing. I've got an all-star list which does have some expensive cards, cards even above the $20 threshold, which is where I think that EDH really lives. And then I've got a list of hidden gems. All those cards are under $10 and several of them are just a dollar. I've also left Soul Ring off of this list just because it's been in every Commander product. Everybody knows it's an amazing card. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Hopefully you're able to learn some things from this list. My number 10 spot here, I've got Solemn Simulacrum. This guy is wonderful. He's about $6 right now. You can find him for a little bit less at times. He is always worth picking up for trade fodder because of the two different abilities. He's got comes into play and a leaves play. And while he's in play, you might as well attach a sword or something to him. This is one of the best cards out there in EDH by far, hands down. The number nine spot here, I've got Chromatic Lantern. And I wasn't originally a fan of Chromatic Lantern until I started playing it in multicolored decks. What it's really designed for is to make sure that you can always cast your spells. It's extremely good. It started at a two, three, four dollar card. It's up to seven dollars, and I just see it climbing until we see a reprint because of how useful it is. It is a better investment than dual lands in a multicolored deck because it just allows you to always fix your mana when it comes out. The number eight spot here, I've got Hall of the Bandit Lord. Commanders are great, but often slow. This card allows you to give the commander haste and attack right away. Just incredible card. Well worth playing. The three life really matters. Zilch in most EDH games. In the number seven spot here, I've got Extra Planar Lens. Uh, this is really on here because several people mentioned it over at Magic the Seattleing. I like the card. It's a little bit fragile. If you want to be really spiky with it, though, and not share the love around to the other players who are using those single or dual color decks, you can always use Snow Covered Lands. Doesn't make friends, but it is definitely extremely strong. In the number six spot here, I've got Expedition Map. This is a common, an incredibly powerful common. It allows you to cruise through your deck and find the amazing lands that you want to play. And EDH is full of wonderful lands, 20 years of incredible lands. This common is well worth picking up. In the number five spot here, I've got a card that was recently reprinted, and now is the time to pick it up. Worm Coil Engine is a powerhouse in Modern and in EDH. It leaves you with two different tokens when it dies. It, so it basically survives those board wipes. It also has lifelink on it, one of my favorite abilities in EDH. In a multiplayer game, your life total matters a lot, and being able to keep it up with creatures is very, very helpful. The last pro tip that I've got on this card is if you can give it trample, with something like a Keswick Wolf Run, every creature that's blocking it, you only have to do one damage to. The damage doesn't have to be equal to its total because of the death touch on this. I've seen this blow away entire armies and trample past. A great combination to be aware of. The number four spot here, I've got Kozilek 
in EDH, the ability to force other people to sacrifice permanence is often the only way you can remove a board state that has really become congested. And Kozilek also has draw four cards on it as a triggered ability when you cast it. This is one of the best ways to refill your hand. A budget alternative here, because Kozilek is kind of silly priced right now, is Mind's Eye. I have seen this card draw eight or ten cards for people. Incredible commander card. The number three spot here, I've got Ugin. If I had done this list a few months ago, Karin would have been in this spot. But I honestly believe that in EDH and even in Legacy 12 post, Ugin is better than Karin. Karin fits into Urzatron in Modern really well. But Ugin has two different ways to keep himself alive. What more can you ask for out of a Planeswalker? Oh wait, it's got Lightning Bolt strapped on the top. I'm putting this guy in a lot of decks. Any ramp deck that I have will have Ugin. The number two spot here, I've got Sensei's Divining Top, Public Service Announcement. If you're playing top, know how to play it well. It can really slow down a game, and I know some playgroups that have banned it because of that. Be aware of what's in your deck and what you want to draw before even spending the top. Think about what is the card I need given this board state. And then try to top at the end of other people's turns before it gets to your turn. Make sure that you also have ways to reshuffle. Evolving Wilds is a really nice common way to reshuffle your deck and get the maximum effect out of this. The fetch lands are also really inexpensive right now, well worth picking up for EDH and comboing with a top. In the number one spot, I've got Batter Skull. This card is just incredible. Equipment is the gift that keeps giving, being able to play it again and again on your commander each time it's killed. And what I like about Batter Skull over some of the alternatives the honorable mentions here, like Jitte and Swords, is that it comes with a creature. And for three mana, you can return it to your hand. In a long, grindy game, it's virtually impossible to get rid of. I mean, yes, something like Croson Grip can kill it, but very, very difficult. The lifelink on this also matters a lot, and Vigilance is the perfect ability for EDH. In normal one-versus-one magic games, I don't care for Vigilance. But in EDH, where four or five people could attack you, this is so important. The ability to defend and attack at the same time. Every day I'm shuffling. List number one done. On to the budget list here. These are hidden gems of EDH. Cards that people don't realize how amazing they are. Myriad Landscape is extremely nice ramp that can go in any deck. Outside of a green deck, I would definitely play this. Why not in green? Because green's got better ramp. But for colors like red or blue, where ramp is really light, this is a great way to ramp. Number nine spot here, I've got Trading Post. If you build a deck around Trading Post, it can do amazing things. But even if you don't build around it, you've got four different options here. You would be surprised at how often one of these four options is highly relevant. Goats can carry swords, gaining life can save you, and being able to return artifacts from your graveyard is great. This card is wonderful, and it's extremely inexpensive at a dollar. Journeyer's Kite is another wonderful EDH card that's overlooked. It makes sure that you hit your land drop every turn, and it also gives you a shuffle effect. So you're thinning the land out of your deck into your hand that you don't really want to draw and then you're able to cast these larger spells. Also, if you combo this with some way to put cards back on top of your library, like Brainstorm, you could turn those land into real cards. Wonderful card. Burnished Heart. This is a new card that I've just started to play with. It's double ramp for you at six mana, which sounds like a lot. In EDH, games tend to go longer, but it also gives you a creature in the intern. I've seen this guy put out on turn three, do a little bit of damage. When a board wipe comes around, turn into ramp. Very, very nice card in EDH, playable in any deck. Number six spot here, I've got a mean card, Dust Bowl. Dust Bowl is a $9 card that lets you toast other people's non-basic lands. Non-basic lands can be really, really powerful, and this is a reusable effect 
If you're putting out extra land for Journeyer's Kite, this is a really nice combo, or maybe with a Crucible of the Worlds, to be able to play your Sacrifice land from the graveyard. This is a reusable Wasteland for 10% of the price of a Wasteland. Number five spot here, I've got Forge Master. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I've been testing with this guy in Vintage. Vintage is so much fun, and this tutor is incredible, especially if you can sacrifice artifacts that give you something when they go to the graveyard. You get this two-for-one extra ability out of it. This tutor is just wonderful. Definitely throw it in an artifact-heavy deck. The number four spot here, I've got Steel Hellkite. It's another dollar card that allows you to control the board. 5-5 five, five Flyer is nothing to avoid. You add on Fire Breathing and the ability to destroy your opponent's entire token army for zero mana. It's well worth playing. This guy has saved me many times in Memnarch when my opponent had really this overwhelming board state that I was able to wipe out in two or three turns. Number three spot here, I've got another control card, Argentum Armor. It's six mana, and it's six to equip. This is definitely in the over-the-top fun side of things, although there are ways to sneak this out or to play Artifact Ramp to get it out incredibly early. A card like Goto can drop this on the battlefield on turn three as a commander, get it equipped on turn four and start destroying permanents. So much fun. The number two spot here, I've got a card that does make me cry a little bit when I see it come out. Torpor Orb shuts down decks, but it also stops a lot of combos. It's on this list because it is so powerful and it reminds people to put artifact and enchantment removal into their main deck that's not just creature based. Being able to respond to your opponent's board state is very important in EDH. Torpor Orb is a great way to slow down other decks and let your deck do what it needs to do. The number one spot here, I've got a card that I didn't even have on my draft list. And then several people over at Magic the Seattling pointed it out. Marguerite also plays this. It's really powerful. Mimic Vat allows you to grab any creature as it's going into the graveyard and imprint it and then make copies of it every turn. If you make that copy at the end of somebody's turn, it's going to stick around until the next end step. When comboed with cards like Worm Coil Engine or Solemn Simulacrum, you're getting amazing value out of this card. The utility on Mimic of that is extremely high. Give this a try in control or in aggro decks. It really lives in either. A haster coming out every turn hits that aggro, and ramp like Solemn helps you significantly with control. Or an enter the battlefield effect that destroys other creatures. The card is just amazing. And often the best card you want under this is something your opponent has put into their deck. Nothing is better than beating your opponent with their own cards. Thanks. This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon sponsoring the channel. I greatly appreciate it. We've got some pack openings coming up here in about a week. If you would like to get in on those, there's the opportunity to do so over at Patreon. Also, thank you to Mox Boarding House, where I am currently blogging about Commander. Later this week, we've got a, a recap of the Vintage Friday Night Magic, where I went 3-1. and one, And we're also looking at a... Oh, we also have a speculation video coming up here in the next week or so. Thank you guys so much. Take care. What was the other one I'm doing?